seminary that exists for 134 years and gave to the church in the United States over 2,000 priests. Today we give thanks to our good Lord for sending us the good shepherds, those wonderful priests who served tirelessly to this great community of the United States. But also today, we ask our good Lord to bless us with more good and holy vocations to the priesthood and religious life, especially for our seminary. We do need, my friends, more than ever, good, holy, dedicated, courageous priests for this great country, for our world. This is a very special moment in the history of our seminary. Last night, to surprise all of us, we filled the chapel of the seminary with so many people who came for their katis, the traditional singing of honor of St. Cyril Methodius, and for all night adoration. First time ever. And today, this afternoon, in such a great number you came here to celebrate, to pray, to give thanks, to ask, and to receive the blessings that God is willing to bestow upon us as much as we open our hearts and we say yes to the Lord. Yes, the way St. Cyril and Methodius did in their lives. So my friends, today I ask you to be joyful, to be hopeful, to be grateful, and to open our hearts for the Lord as we welcome very special guests. Well, you might be surprised why this young priest is the main celebrant of this Mass. Not some of the older, more accomplished, if you will. Not why a bishop or somebody else. Well, this is, this priest, Father Martin Victor, is the newest priest ordained from our seminary for the Diocese of Biloxi. Father Martin, welcome back as a priest of Jesus Christ and thank you for presiding this, at this celebration. I would like to welcome a very special guest. The Bishop of the Chaldean Church in the United States of the East. Bishop Francis, you are a very special guest. Welcome to Council of I know many of you are Chaldeans. Isn't that great that we finally got a bishop to this church, to this shrine? And we want him more here. And he already told me he will be here to celebrate for the Chaldean community the feast of St. 
John Paul II in October, if his patriarch will allow him and his busy schedule, but if possible, he will be here with us on an annual basis, I hope, because this is the archdiocesan shrine of St. John Paul II. And this is where he, like during his life, wants to gather people of all nations, all backgrounds, who believe in Jesus to praise God and to pray for the world. With us is also Father Joseph from the Sacred Heart Church uh, in Nova Livonia. Livonia, Livonia, very close. Father Joseph is the one who carried the relics of St. Cyril Methodius because they are from his church. We have those here, they are too big, but he brought those smaller ones, less heavy, and you will be able to venerate them and after the celebration. They are first class relics, the bones of those great saints. This is so fitting that we have the priest and the bishop of the Eastern Rite, because St. Cyril Methodius during their lives, they brought all people, all backgrounds together. They kept us in one in Christ as one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We couldn't have a better setting of the celebration of the priests and, and all of those who are here at the altar than we have today. And of course, I can go on. We have so many wonderful priests here. I welcome all of them, our great seminarians, without whom we will have no celebration. About, that's the good news, about one and a half year ago, we got six seminarians. Now we have 23 here in Orchard Lake and five in Poland, and the number is growing. That's why we came today to give thanks to God for it. That's why we are going to go wild at the auction after, at the dinner, because we want to renovate the rooms that are still need to be renovated, the bathrooms, because we want to show them how much we love them, how much we appreciate the fact that they left their families. They left their country from Poland and something new for our place, from Vietnam. And they want to be the priests of Jesus Christ in this great country of the United States. So God bless our seminarians. God bless you all, my friends. In that special way, also, I would like to mention the presence of uh, the Consul General of the Republic of Poland, uh, Mr. Richard Walwender. Panie Walwender, serdecznie witamy. Proszę powstać. Witamy Consul General of the Republic of Poland. All the regions, all the workers, the staff of the Ochalic schools, they are here representing a good number, I think better than ever. That's a good sign. We are all here to praise the Lord, to pray together, and I just hope that uh, my welcoming uh, is not going to be longer than the bishop's candle. <laughs> and we're thanking you for that coming. So my friends, please stand as we continue our praise, and the Mass is offered for all the benefactors of the Ochardic schools, especially the seminary today. I'm really proud to say that this is my alma mater, the place which, where we now celebrate Mass, and I can call this place my alma mater, my home. <coughs> so there is no better gift which I can offer than the Holy Eucharist. I'm offering this Mass for the seminarians and the faculty of St. Cyril Methodist Seminary, as well as for the people who support this beautiful institution. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, they have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my most grievous faults. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
który obwieszcza zbawienie, który mówi do Syjonu Twój Bóg zaczął królować. Głos. Twoi strażnicy podnoszą głos. Razem wznoszą okrzyki radosne, bo oglądają na własne oczy powrót Pana na Syjon. Zabrzmijcie radosnym śpiewem wszystkie ruiny Jeruzalem, bo Pan pocieszył swój lud, odkupił Jeruzalem, Pan obnażył już swe ramię święte na oczach wszystkich narodów i wszystkie krańce ziemi zobaczą zbawienie naszego Boga. Oto Słowo Boże.
practice. Paul and Barnack spoke out badly and said, it was necessary that the word of God be spoken to you first. But since you rejected and condemned yourself as unworthy of entered life, we now turn to the gentle, for so the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light of the gentles, that you might be instrument of salvation of the end of the earth. The gentle were the light. When they heard this and glorified the word of the Lord, all who were destined for eternal of life came to believe. And the word of the Lord continued to spread through the whole region. The word of the Lord. of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this household. If the, if the peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest on him, but if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, Eat what is set before you, cure the sick in it, and say to them, The kingdom of God is at hand for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So we heard Jesus say that whosoever house you enter, greet them with peace be with you. So I greet you in this beautiful house with the same words of Jesus. Shlam These are the words of Jesus, peace be upon you. This is not only a common greeting for us, but it is also an extension of what Jesus has come out and proclaimed because the kingdom is amongst us. The kingdom is here. And it's been proclaimed for such a long time. Isaiah's readings, one of my favorite readings, and I'll tell you why, it's a little strange. Because it says, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the one bringing good news. There's a translation that actually says, how beautiful upon the mountains are the sandals 
I'm going to bring you good news. Now, do you know why I like these, this reading? <laughs> I like my sandals all year long. But why are they so beautiful? Not my sandals. Why is it so beautiful? Why is the feet of those bringing the good news so beautiful? Is it because of them being messengers? It, it is, but it's something deeper. It's what they bring. It's who they bring, actually. Who they bring with them is God. And the fullness of God and the beauty of God. This is what makes this place special because it prepares for the message of God, the Word of God to be alive. And today we have the Word of God in flesh, in a priest, and soon in the body of Christ, celebrated on the altar. Back then, during the time of Isaiah, it's to bring good news to a city that will be a ruin. Three weeks ago, I just came back from Iraq, and three weeks ago I was in the center of where ISIS had their central place. I was in Mosul, amongst a lot of the destruction, and I can say honestly, a lot of the homes had so many bullet holes in it, it was, it was terrible. And yet, God refuses to leave that place empty and desolate and destroyed. We were there to enthrone God's glory in a person, in a bishop, who is now taking over, who is now making sure that God's name is back to a city that's been left in ruin. So to that place, happy are the feet who will bring the good news and blessing to that new bishop. And the cathedral where he was enthroned had the, the good grace, and yet it's a difficult grace, of a martyr bishop who was buried in that church, Bishop Farad Rahul, who more than 10 years ago gave his life to make sure that the good news is received and that there's hope, that there's life. And in him giving his life, we've started his cause. And God willing, within the next few years, he will be known as Saint Bishop Faraj Rah, along with the other ones who were also martyred. I had also, and I wanted to go to the very place where another priest was martyred, Father Rahi Geni, and three of his servants that were with him, there were subdeacons. We went exactly to the spot, to the place where they were killed. We stood on the place where they were killed. Or I should say, we stood in the place where God's glory was proclaimed. The last words that he said, he was asked, didn't we tell you that you shouldn't come and celebrate Mass and you should close the church doors? And he said, you want me to close the house of God? I will never. These were the last words that he proclaimed. Now, what makes them so special? What makes them so beautiful? Their feet, their sandals, are they saints? I'm gonna say two things. No, yes. No, they're ordinary men and women, ordinary people. I also had the good pleasure, unfortunately, to say to go to the place where Sister Cecile was martyred. Killed, or went to the very place where she was laying dead, or I should say alive. Why? Her last words were that the sisters knew they were leaving, they had to go somewhere, and she said, I want to stay with Jesus. I don't want to leave Jesus by himself. Oh, marvelous words. But what made her special? is not her. There was a call from God for her to stay with him. There was a call from God for the other two or three or four or five or the countless number of martyrs for them to just step a little bit further and to do something for God, which is why we're here today, to honor two men. Are they saints? Cyril and Methodius. They are. They're proclaimed saints. But were they saints? It's not that they were saints is they heard the word of God saying, I need you. I need you so that 
and they, they don't know this, hundreds of years later, my name can be magnified and glorified in a strange new world. Here in America, here in the suburbs of Detroit, because of what they did, it goes beyond who they are and what they have come to do. This is the beauty of Jesus, and this is the beauty of the Word of God, and this is how God is alive. But it is also lived simply. What does this mean to you? Well, it means you need to come on this day and celebrate and Yes. Celebrate what? God is with you. That sometimes, all the time, God calls you. God calls you and says, I need a little bit more from you. Sometimes he will say, I need you to put on this wonderful collar. And I know it's going to be a beautiful sacrifice. And sometimes he will say, I need you to put on this beautiful ring. And I know this is going to be a beautiful sacrifice. Not as a bishop, I'm talking about as a married person. So, <laughs> Though that one is too. I'm, I'm still experiencing the beauty of, of that call. At least trying to figure it out. God is good. But this is the beauty of also where you're at too. We see we're not just celebrating to men who gave their lives. We're celebrating you. As you're now called to give your life. How are you called to live your life and to give your life? Because God is, not probably, not maybe, God is calling you to do a little bit more and a little bit more. And it's like, oh, it's the burden. It's not a burden. It's difficult, but difficulty doesn't mean burden. Difficulty means, okay, Lord, that means I'm going to have to trust in you more. That means I'm going to have to ask you and beg you to walk with me. Don't leave me, Lord. And the Lord is saying to you, oh, I haven't left. Because everything I ask of you, I've already prepared the graces for you. And that, when you take that extra step for the Lord, your feet, or sandals, will be happy. Because what you've done is be part of the proclamation that Jesus is beautiful, God is alive in a world that's got a lot of darkness, it's got a lot of crazy things that are happening, in a world that looks for itself, for happiness and joy, what we're saying is, oh no, no, no. Joy, happiness, beauty is in Jesus, and the great pleasure to proclaim Jesus. First, we must accept. First, we must live like the gospel. That we hear Jesus is bringing the good news, proclaiming such beauty in his good news, that he's proclaiming such life and appointing those to come out and to prepare for him to come. You see, I'm not saying that I'm Jesus, but I am saying that I gotta prepare, that I gotta do. I do my part and Jesus comes. That's what the 72 were all about. They were sent to prepare for the coming of Jesus. Similar to John the Baptist, similar to you. Your role, sometimes it's to be the one to proclaim or to prepare for the one to proclaim. Both, whether you're an apostle, one of the 12, or a disciple, one of the 72, we're both making sure that Christ is present. Now, when Christ is present, and we see this in St. Paul, how joyful that the people who never had the opportunity, would have never had the opportunity to accept Jesus and receive Jesus. And I have to tell you this, the work that you do, God takes it, and its effects are not just for six months, a year, 10 years, God uses your good works and proclaims it for a hundred years, for a thousand years, for many generations. For this is how God works. He makes himself now present through you, what you've received from those who came before you, to what you are prepared for, for those who will come after you, the way you live your life today for him, this now you're making Christ present. And I love the words of Pope Benedict when he says, Every generation 
needs to have the incarnation come again, which means that Jesus needs to be enfleshed, that Jesus needs to come and become alive. And this is the generation where God is you. You are now the vision of Christ and how you live and how you give. So praise be the name of Jesus. Praise be the name that we are coming here together, not only to glorify his name, but also to be part of something so much bigger than us. And God willing, that this will continue, whether it's in this seminary, this beautiful seminary, or in this community, this beautiful community, or in this country, this beautiful country, and in this world, this God-created, beautiful world, that the mighty voice of God may be proclaimed, that the light of Jesus will continue to shine in every corner. Thank you for helping us celebrate. Thank you for being here. God's blessings be upon you, upon your homes, upon everybody that you know, that God may be alive in you, and through you he may be proclaimed. And everything that we do and we live, we proclaim and we say, blessed be the name of Jesus, both now and forever. Amen. To Christ, who night the Slavic peoples to the brothers and sisters of others, we bring our prayers for the church and for the world. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, bishops, present among us, Bishop Francis, priests, deacons, and all the faithful, that each will bear witness to the love and mercy of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For proclamation of the truth of the gospel, lead people to the truth about human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the benefactors and friends of the Orthodox schools, may merciful Father bless the living with His grace and welcome into heavenly banquet those who passed away. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Módmy się o święte powołania kapłańskie do naszego seminarium aby młodzi ludzie nie bali się wyruszyć na żniwo pańskie. Ciebie prosimy. Módlmy się za świętej pamięci premiera Jana Olszewskiego, aby dobry Bóg przyjął go do swego królestwa. Ciebie prosimy. Módlmy się za naszą wspólnotę eucharystyczną, aby niosła świadectwo prawdy Ewangelii. Ciebie prosimy. Gracious God, you brought the light of the gospel to the Slavic nations through Saint Cyril and his brother Saint Benodius. Listen graciously our prayers and help us to become one in faith and praise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
See guys, all of you who are not ordained there yet? This is your future, sooner or later. Don't give up, you will be the priest of God. We need you. We need a wonderful, courageous priest, as I said in the beginning. And I want to thank also all of the faculty members, the professors who are here, the formation team. They are doing a marvelous job. And uh, I want to mention one more person. There is with us Father Bogusław Rembach from the Diocese of Denver, also our graduate, who came to be with us for this feast. Father Bogusław, please stand. Welcome. Thank you for being here. No. He was ordained two years ago, so he is a very mature priest already. But thank you for being with us today. Um, 
Well, I will tell you something. Another problem that we ran yesterday, we had to say no to many people. Our banquet, our dinner tonight was sold out. We did not expect that. That's why we moved from the smack area uh, to uh, the prep dining hall. I guess next year we have to go back to the smack area because many of you wanted to be here today. So I'm sorry we couldn't fit you more. Be sure next year to sign up to buy the tickets in advance. As soon as we announce, you buy the tickets, okay? This is a very nice celebration and a very nice dinner. You should see, I cannot thank enough. Tracy and all the ladies who are working on it. This room, and when you enter, and you have been there before, you will not recognize that room. It's like a beautiful wedding banquet hall. You will see that in a few minutes. But before we go there, um, I would like to thank the uh, music director, Fanny Kinga, all of those who are helping, our seminarian Daniel, all the liturgy, all the servers. They did a marvelous job. They know how to serve the Lord at the altar. They will know how to serve the Lord when they go to the world and to proclaim the good news in good times and in bad times, especially today. They need that strength. They need your support. It's so easy to pick up and criticize the priest. They are human beings. I always tell people, what do you think? I came from a different planet. I am as human as you are. And I have my sins. I have to go to confession. Oh, yes. But, but we have to struggle to be saints. All of us are called to be saints. And you, together with us, we are all one family. We all try to enter into heaven. When we support each other, we can do it. And now I, would, I am very privileged to make a very special presentation to Bishop Francis, who gave such a beautiful, inspiring harmony. Wasn't that great, Bishop? Francis, thank you so much. Uh, he has uh, requested a relic of a very special saint for the Chaldean community, a relic of Saint John, John Paul the Great. We are blessed with his relics. We have those relics for a while. So the request was made, and on my last trip to Poland, Cardinal Cibis, his excellent, his eminence, Cardinal Cibis, the former secretary of John Paul II for four years, asked me to present the relics of the cassock that was put into his blood, and to present today to his excellency Bishop Francis as a gift for the Chaldean community. I don't have the relic for it, but the relics are here, and the bishop will obtain the relics with a special certificate. It's not fake, it's real. May John Paul II, who loved the Chaldean people, bless you and keep you in this place. This is my second homily now. <laughs> so, the great Pope John Paul II uh, is not only a great saint in the world, but in a very particular way for our Chaldean community. And he has given us so many blessings one of the great blessings that we still have, and that is ECRC, Eastern Catholic Re-Evangelization Center. Because one thing that Pope John Paul the Great always pushed for is not only evangelization, but re-evangelization. Which means all of us who have been baptized, who have believed in Christ, we need to go deeper into the faith of who Jesus is. So that we, as we know him more, we may be in love with him more. So this is extremely special for us. He is extremely special for us. But now I also have a gift for this community because I noticed that there is a wonderful Vietnamese community that is here with us and seminarians from the Vietnamese community. Now with God there are no coincidences. So it was by grace that I became somehow from the outside part of a, a small way. Um, the process of beatification of the great uh, Bishop Francis Xavier Nguyen Van Thuan. So uh, our, our dear sisters would know who this great saint, who was a beloved of John Paul II himself. And this man suffered so much for the gospel, and yet in the end he was taken, and he was released from Vietnam, was brought up into John Paul II, he took him in and had him do the homily for the year 2000 to all the clergy. And he actually went to the great pope and said, what do you want me to say? He says, your experience, nothing more. What you experienced in prison. The great thing about him is he used to celebrate mass in his hands. He had no altar. 
They used to smuggle bread in and wine. And so John Paul II, when, when uh, Bishop Antoine passed away, the great John Paul II is the one who buried him and he did this. And he said, his hand was greater than any cathedral in the world where the body and blood of Jesus was celebrated. So I have received a few relics of this great saint to be his blessed right now. And I would like, I don't have it with me just yet, and I would like to give a few of those relics, it's a second class relic of his, uh, I believe his cassock, to this great community so that the great name of this great saint will be also honored along with his pope at the time, the great John Paul II. So this is my gift to this community here. And thank you and God bless you all. This is how the words in giving you receive is fulfilled tonight. We are so privileged with the rally. And wasn't that great for our seminarians and the beautiful sisters from Vietnam to sing the song in honor of Mary? Beautiful job, beautiful sister. Thank you for seminarians. So, so my friends, those who bought the tickets in advance, you are welcome now after the blessing. Um, to first to venerate the relics, first class relics of St. Selim Methodius, and then go to the dining hall area. And those who couldn't this year, be sure that you are next year. And God bless you. Father Marcin, please bless us, give us your uh, priestly blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God the glory and joy of the saints through the Methodius, who has caused you to be strengthened by means of their outstanding prayers, bless, bless you with an ending blessing. Amen. Free to their intercession from present ills and formed by the example of the holy way of life, may you be ever devoted to serving God and your neighbor. Amen. You may possess the joys of the whole land, where the Holy Church rejoices that her children are admitted in perpetual peace to the company of the citizens of heaven. Amen. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to